know it's nerve-wracking to have to get up in front of your classmates and give a speech, but maybe learning how the best speakers do it would help. Hi, I'm Natalia McDonald, and this is Madison Collier. And we're here because we're studying finance at St. Edwards, and like you, we decided to take a business speaking class. We intend to inform you about Ted the company, the speeches, and the speakers. Now I'm going to hand it off to Madison to talk about the company. So I'm sure the majority of you are familiar with TED, but do you know what TED actually is? TED is an acronym, an organization, and an opportunity. Technology, Entertainment, Design. This organization first began in 1984 with the original, and at that time, the only intentional TED Talk. This, this meeting included someone from Sony who did a demo of a CD-ROM, and someone from Apple, who did a demonstration of the first Apple computer. And yet, the first TED Talk failed miserably. They lost so much money with this one presentation that they didn't give another TED Talk for six years. Right. At which point, in 1990, they held their second conference, and it was wildly successful. So they, at that point, began hosting their yearly TED Talks. TED is an opportunity for individuals to come together and share their knowledge, often the best and the brightest in their field. But there's another opportunity that the majority of people don't know about. With TED Talks, each year one speaker is selected and given one million dollars, with which they try to accomplish what they believe to be their wish to change the world. And I will hand this back to Natalia so she can tell you a little bit about being a TED speaker. Okay, so TED has nine tips for like what they think that the best public speakers do. The first tip is unleash the master within. If you're passionate about what you're talking about, the audience can tell and it'll make them care more. The second one is tell at least three stories. According to a study done by Yuri Hassan at Princeton University, brains actually sync up when you tell stories, so the same part of your brain is activated in the storyteller and the people listening to the stories. The third one would be practice. Dr. Jill, who gave a TED talk, she practiced 200 times before giving her talk. Um, and the, another one would be teach something new. Uh, the human brain loves learning new things. For example, the hippocampus in the taxi driver's brain is larger than that in a bus driver's brain because they're driving like new routes every single day. And then another one would be use humor because it lowers the audience's defenses and it makes them like you more. And Ted also suggests that you stick to the 18 minute rule. If you go any more over, the audience gets bored. And then if you use a PowerPoint, use more pictures than text, because why would the audience want to talk, read what you're already talking about? And the, finally, the, one of the last ones is stay in your lane. Ted Talks are usually 65% pathos, 25% logos, and 10% and the last tip would be keep your hand gestures within your power sphere, which is from the top of your head to the tips of your outstretched fingers down to your belly button. And now I'm going to pass it back to Madison to talk about the speeches. So now that you know a little bit, a little bit more about giving a TED Talk, I'd like to introduce to you some of the most famous TED speakers. What do Stephen Hawking, Monica Lewinsky, and David Blaine all have in common? They gave incredibly passionate TED Talks. Perceived passion was studied by Professor Melissa Cardone at Northeastern University. In this study, she pulled a group of investors and a group of entrepreneurs, and the entrepreneurs were given the opportunity to pitch their ideas and companies to the investors. These investors were then asked to rank the qualities that helped them to select which entrepreneurs they would like to invest with. Perceived passion was considered to be the third most important quality in a presentation. This was more important than the age of the presenter, the experience that the presenter had, and even their education level. One particularly passionate presenter is Luis von Ahm, who gave a TED Talk on reCAPTCHA. He was the creator of both CAPTCHA and reCAPTCHA, and he was as he mentioned in his TED Talk, he, he was thinking about the fact that 
he had been told that 200 million CAPTCHAs are completed each day. At first, he was excited because he thought, I created that. And then he realized how much time people were wasting by completing CAPTCHAs to log into websites. And then he felt badly that he created that. So he decided to look into something that would better utilize people's time. And he came up with reCAPTCHA, which is similar to CAPTCHA, except that they only use two words. The first word is still, a way to authenticate that you're not a bot and you're, you're a true user. But the second word has actually been scanned in from a book. Books are scanned in and then digitized all the time. But books, especially those that are 50 years or older, sometimes cannot be digitized by the computer. Up to 30% of the words that have been scanned in aren't recognizable from the computers. So each reCAPTCHA includes one of those words, so each time you fill out a reCAPTCHA, you are actually digitizing books. And points like these made by TED speakers help to draw in the audience because not only are they passionate about their topic, but they're giving the audience something new about a new fact about something they thought they already knew about. And now I'll hand it back to Natalia so she can wrap up our presentation. In conclusion, we talked about TED the Company by talking about how they originally failed. We talked about the speeches by giving nine tips of TED speakers. And we talked about the speakers by talking about CAPTCHA and ReCAPTCHA and Perceived CAPTCHA. Thank you. Any questions?